Sorensen from Sereno Scientific is also participating in BioEurope today in Stockholm. And he will tell us all about the milestones they have already achieved and the ones who are uh, about to come. Thank you so much, uh, Sten, for being here. Thank you, it's a pleasure. Could you please uh, tell us a little bit about Sereno Scientific? What problems are you solving and what is exciting about this company? Yes, uh, absolutely. So we are uh, pioneering uh, a new technology into cardiovascular disease. So it's actually epigenetic modulation through a molecule that is an HDAC inhibitor. And um, the reason we're doing this is, of course, uh, addressing unmet need on the market for patients. And uh, we are focusing in on rare diseases because that's where we believe we can do the most uh, value, provide the most value to these patients. And we have three programs in our portfolio. Uh, we recently um, communicated top line results from our lead program, CS1, in the rare disease pulmonary arterial hypertension. And we are very lucky to have the data that we got from that trial. And um, Could you tell us a little bit more about that data? Yeah, first maybe. So pulmonary arterial hypertension is a devastating disease. It mostly affects women. It hits them in the middle of their life. And you have seven years to live uh, as a mean when you are diagnosed. And currently, uh, most of the drugs there are old type of drugs, so they dilate the pulmonary vessel. And the pathophysiology of this disease is that you have an aggressive growth of muscle in your pulmonary artery and also connective tissue. So the artery becomes very narrow and very stiff. So the right heart, which pumps blood to the lungs to oxygenate the blood, has a hard time doing that because the pressure goes up, it's a narrow lumen, and eventually the right heart fails, and that's why you die in this disease. So current drugs are dilating the vessels to lower the pressure and help the heart and the patient, but they really don't address the origin of the disease. So the root cause is actually fibrotic development and uh, proliferation of the muscle tissue in the pulmonary artery. And our molecule, uh, VPA, which is an HDAC inhibitor, has been documented to actually address the root cause. So in studies of pulmonary arterial hypertension in animals, it's been documented that we both can reverse and prevent the progression of this disease. So we, have, we are bringing that technology to man and we have come now to uh, phase 2A uh, data and conclusion of that trial, which we have done together with the major Abbott and their technology that we implant in these patients to measure the pulmonary pressure uh, wirelessly. So what did we see in the trial? Well, these patients, of course, then have a poor prognosis, but they also have a deterioration of their physical capacity. And what the physicians do in their daily practice is that they measure the risk score. So it's a 13 marks of their physical health and the risk. And what they want to do is that when they have defined the risk of the patients, they tailor the treatment to these patients to help them. What you want to do is you want to reduce the risk for these patients so they can live longer. And we have been able, with our drug in only three months therapy, on top of standard of care, the original drugs, we have been able to reduce the risk score in 43%, 9 out of 21 patients, with one point. What does that mean? Well, one point reduction of risk score means 23% less risk of death in one year. So we have seen that from our study here, the 2A study, which is actually a safety tolerance study, but we looked for efficacy markers. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we saw in the study was that patients are determined, their physical capacity is determined by something called new heart classification. And there are four classes. If you have class four, you're bedridden. You can't leave your bed. If you're class one, you're diagnosed, but you really don't feel the disease, despite that you have seven years to live. What we saw in our trial was that one third of the patients moved functional class 
from a more severe state to a, a, an easier state of the disease. Five out of seven moved to from function class three to two, and two patients moved from function class two to one, not wow. feeling the disease. That's great. So we've seen these risk score reduction, the physical capacity improvement, and then the third thing was that in two thirds of the material of the patients, we saw a reduction of the pulmonary pressure as measured by CardioMEMS, this wireless technology. So that is very encouraging for us. And you are here today at uh, by Europe. You were here yesterday, and there are days to come. Uh, who are you communicating this with? Are you talking to potential partners or um, investors? And w what have you got uh, as a feedback yet? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good question. Yeah, we're absolutely here to talk to pharma uh, companies about what we're doing. Uh, we are getting known in the world for our pioneering effort and uh, we've been covered in Fierce Biotech and elsewhere in, in uh, media and other you know, uh, channels of, of scientific communication. Uh, so uh, Pharma is very interested to speak to us and meet with us and we have met with Pharma before uh, and now they're coming back to listen to what we saw in this trial. But they're also interested in what we do with the rest of the company in the portfolio. We actually have a second program with HDAC inhibitors, and that's called CSO14, and it, that is in phase one already. And we um, had a capital markets day two weeks ago, three hours presentation on stage. It's video recorded and readily available to listen to, and there are 200 slides or something, where we tell all about what we're doing and where we are. And the same day as the Capital Markets Day, we released the new target indication for our second program, CSO14, the HDAC program, with a new chemical entity, actually. And that is also rare disease, uh, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So another um, uh, uh, progressive disease, and this time not the pulmonary artery, but the pulmonary tissue, it is even worse uh, that rare disease than PH, you have a life expectancy of three to five years and it's mostly affecting men. So we have seen that with this drug that we affect both lung function and fibrosis development in a dose dependent manner. So we target now IPF and that drug will finish its phase one trial by the summer next year and then we'll move for phase two. So what are we going to expect from you during the coming two years? Well, so um, first, you know, we've had, I, my calendar is fully booked. I was fortunate to be able to be here and be interviewed by you. Uh, but otherwise, it's, it's fully booked and we have very good discussions. So there will be that process going on with discussions with pharma. And then, of course, we are doing our operative uh, work with the three programs that we have. So next step with the lead program, where we had this amazing data, we take that information and, and documentation to FDA and discuss the next program and the next clinical trial, and that will most likely be a phase 2B slash 3 pivotal trial. So the trial to get this drug approved uh, to the market and we target that to start uh, get the approval in the spring and then target to start that pivotal trial by the beginning of 26. So that's the next milestone to get approval by FDA. The second program is to finish the phase one ongoing phase one trial by the summer and then the third program which is a novel IP receptor agonist very potent and selective for that receptor we have license from University of Michigan. That's currently in the preclinical phase. We expect to, that to be completed and go into phase one in 26. So those are the three programs and their key milestones. That's very interesting. I wish you all the best and thanks for being here with us today. Thank you, appreciate it.